China just massively changed gaming for the better. Now, we at twitch.tv forward slash tech, and we've already become aware of this. But, uh, yeah, this can be very good and it can also be very bad it really depends it really depends on how they implement this we will see they just put out an article we'll talk about all this shit after the video uh let's leave it up to uh games from scratch to give us the uh the broad aspect Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, China seemed like an unstoppable force in the yep. world of game development. They were it buying did. up studios left, right, and center to the point where it almost felt like half of the industry was owned by Tencent. No, I mean it's it's, it's not they it isn't that they seemed like they were taking over the gaming industry. They were the gaming industry, and not to mention gotcha games, games that run on your mobile phone with a quarter of the development time of other titles are making. 50 to 80x what any other games are making. Like, they are completely controlling the market. They did seem unstoppable, but we did find one force that can stop them dead in their tracks. Government. And that is the Chinese government. The kind now, what I'm really wondering about this is, I don't know why the Chinese government actually has a problem with this because they're pulling in so much money into China, you would assume they'd be happy with it. But I mean, shit, I guess we'll figure it out. But I mean, I guess maybe they're trying to protect their own citizens because... That being said, the majority of people who spend on these games are from China, so maybe they're trying to protect their residents? The Chinese government just announced rules on the gaming industry in China that... Or because the corporations gained too much money power? I guess that also makes sense. ...just brought things crashing to a halt. So here we are on Reuters. Yes, not Reuters. I'm saying it right this time. On Reuters News. And here is the article. So this is pretty amazing. So Chinese regulators announced today, Friday, a wide range of rules aimed at curbing spending and rewards that encourage video games dealing a blow to the world's large, biggest gaming market yep. uh, which returned to growth this year they now I've, I've heard a lot of spoilers like the prevention of daily logins and loot boxes and making all gotcha rates fair but I've which sounds good but I've also heard changes like live streams aren't allowed to offer in-game rewards. Now, I am wondering if that only affects those in China and how that will affect other games that are from China operating outside that jurisdiction. Let's read this. At the country's annual legislative meeting in 2021, China President Xi Jinping blamed addiction to online gaming for rising myopia and the adverse psychological well-being of the country's young. People really are worried about the youth of the earth. I mean, to be honest, I'm not really seeing it, but okay, let's, okay. Later that year, the National Press and Publications Administration proposed that children under 18 should not be allowed to play online games for more than three hours a week. We remember this. Limiting them to legal game time only between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. on Fridays, weekends, and public holidays starting in early September. We all remember this. In August, the Cyberspace Administration of China proposed rules to limit the smartphone screen time of people under the age of 18 to a maximum of two hours per day. I really don't see, me personally, I really don't see the point of proposing all these rules i mean we are clearly very obviously moving towards a more digital world i don't see the risk or the downside or the negativity of these changes because i mean that's just where the world's going and i'll be real if we can operate from our homes around our loved ones in a safe space i genuinely think that's going to be a net positive on the world and keep less people off the street when they don't need to be there but maybe i'm seeing maybe i'm not seeing some downside but in my opinion i don't see anything wrong with staying home all day and working from your phone or playing games that's just me though they actually had stalled in growth in the past because chinese uh, government stopped granting them licenses to actually create games uh, over kind of an, a review process. Uh, they have a lot of control over their entire markets over there, much more so than we do over okay. in the West. Uh, so what exactly are these new rules? Well, the new rules, uh, which effectively set spending limits on online games, sparked panic among investors, wiping off nearly $80 billion in market value from China's two biggest gaming companies as investors sought to gauge the potential impact on earnings and more restrictions in the offing. Online games will now be banned from giving players rewards if they log in every day. That is basically called a battle pass, and that yep. is like the standard live service market uh, kind of way of monetizing games. A lot of people need to understand why people hate battle passes and why so many com companies offer them. So... In case anybody doesn't know, the reason why companies are allowed to offer such quote-unquote ridiculous rewards, okay, let's break the mold here, $20 for stellar jades and primo gems in a video game, I'm, I'm letting you know the real world value of that is $0. So at the end of the day, even though the rewards are good in-game, $20 for $0 worth of actual product is still a
rip off and if you can't afford to spend money on games you shouldn't spend money on games but the reason why they can offer such what people consider to be ridiculous prices and deals is due to the fact that player retention is a very big, big chunk of the pie that companies show advertisers and sponsors and investors to let them know that, hey, my game's not dead. All of these people are still playing, logging in every day. You should continue investing in our company. And that takes up a huge chunk of what investors really look for. So having things where it's like, oh, Buy this pass for $5 and we'll give you $200 worth of in-game currency if you log in every single day. And then there's Battle Pass where it's log in every day and complete all these tasks, which means you have to log in and play for X amount of time. These are big things that companies love to see and that's why so many companies offer them in every single game uh, that they play. On top of that, uh, pretty much every single online game is using that mechanism and so are basically most mobile games. Yep. So now I want people to know this means paid features and non-paid features. So this means daily logins might be going away some people not might not care about that but that also means that the free 10 polls that people give out every live stream or every every update from honkai star rail you know you log in you get a poll every day for 10 days that too could also be going away so it's a positive and it's also a negative now the reason why that is is because that's also going to force companies to have to make the innate rewards in game i guess almost be a substitute for what these other methods would give us for free so on one hand you could think oh okay well they're just going to stop giving them away and that really sucks but no they'll most likely just have it not be based on daily things not be, be a much less time gatey bullshit more so work towards it you get the reward so less log in every day and more grindy things to get towards a goal which in my opinion i think that's a really good thing but i can see how that can also be seen as a negative well, that is gonna go away uh, so you know rewards for everyday play if they spend on the game for the first time or if they spend several times on the game consecutively so no uh rewarding basically addictive spending yes. behavior so and essentially they just banned gotcha games and i, I honestly think i would love to see they're not banning gotcha games, but they are prohibiting the predatorial forced interaction elements of gotcha games. Uh, North America do this. I can't see it happening. EU, I could see more likely to make this happen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, China just banned gotcha games essentially, and the industry took. A no, they didn't. A kicking overnight. Uh, so shares of Tencent were down by 16% at one point. Yep. NetEase plunged as much as 25%. Process, which owns a good chunk of Tencent, also dropped substantially because of this as well. Uh, and then a lot of tangential companies are also going to take a kicking. We're going to see that in just a second. Uh, on top of that, uh, it, it's not necessarily the regulations themselves. It's the policy risk that's too high. Executive Director of Institutional Sales at Broker UOB uh, in, high, in Hong Kong said people had thought this kind of risk should have been over and it started to look at fundamentals again. So basically, if people don't trust investment in the Chinese market when the Chinese government can do something like this to be so disruptive. This video is good. I feel like it's waffling a little bit. I kind of feel like it's losing the plot a little bit. Uh... Let me, let me kind of explain. So the phrase they're banning gotcha games just simply isn't true. Okay. Uh, I actually have a pretty good article pulled up that kind of explains this a little bit more clearly for anybody worrying. And, and I'm worried about people getting the wrong idea. So uh, the guidelines are essentially this, and I'll break it down for anybody who's wondering uh, for this shit at home. Online games can have forced PVP. Stuff like PK, player killing, or open world, PVP, open world PVP modes where you can just get attacked without flying for PVP. This is going to have far wider implications if it makes it to the final draft. There's a lot of ARPGs as well as stuff as like extraction which might be impacted. This one I feel like is fine. I don't really think it will completely destroy any game, but having to be able to opt into open world PVP, I really don't think that's a bad thing. You know, like a World of Warcraft has specific PVP servers and specific PVP zones, and then having the ability to flag yourself for PVP, I, I, I think it's fine. I don't really think it'll kill anything serious. So that's not really that big of a deal. Online games can't have daily logins, first time top up bonuses, or continuous top up bonuses. Online games can't allow high price transactions like auctions. Online games must implement top up limits and warn users that they spend too much. Now, this is really.
good. Okay, a lot of Genji Max grand appeal is every year they reset the top up bonus of the Stellar Jage or Primo Gems you may or may not have bought. It's a scam. Don't do it. The raw Primo Gem packs are always a whale bait. Never buy those regardless. Getting rid of daily logins I think is good. That way people who want to play will only play when they want to play. This is a very good change and online games can't allow high price transactions. I also think that that's fine. Games should really not be costing tens upon thousands of dollars to reach the pinnacle. I think this is a great change. Online games basically need to display health warnings on games started on the game's website. I think this is also another great change. There's a content creator called uh, Tips Out. Uh, he's currently my boss for OTK. He made a video uh, warning me about the sedentary lifestyle that video games and MMOs can affect you. And uh, I actually I actually thank Tips a lot for what I believe is a guy who saved my life. Uh, this isn't really a, a topic I bring up much, but I appreciate Tips Out a lot because uh, that warning alone really opened my eyes to how much I was damaging myself by living on the computer every single day and now i make sure to at least get up for a 30 minute walk every single day uh reminding gamers whenever you can like hey get up stretch that is good because living a sedentary lifestyle can kill you getting random blood clots from sitting down all day can kill you so i do encourage people to get up every hour or so stretch walk around for a little bit and then continue gaming and having constant reminders like this is a very good net positive effect i like this shit a lot this article this benefit does seem like the the pro for the gamer and less pro for the company and monetary value of each company so this is overall good a lot of people might be freaking out this is a very good thing online games require users to provide their real world identifying information this game must verify this information is valid i think this is also very good some people really want complete anonymity on the internet well i don't think anybody deserves complete anonymity if you are going to tell people that you are going to them yourself and then post videos of you doing horrible shit like torturing real human beings every human being should be held accountable for the shit they post on the internet now i would hope that's not retroactive because i'll be real my league chat all logs are terrible and if those are ever pulled up i'll be canceled 100 because the amount of people i've told hey bro self is same. That being said, now that the rules are transparent, let's adjust to them now. Let's continue here. Basically, a complicated way to say no real money transaction or real world good exchange for in-game currency. Also, purchase records must be retained for two years. That's very good for tax reasons and also to make people aware of what they've been spending. You know, it's good. It's good. It's real good. Online games that use loot boxes gotcha needs to have reasonable rates. What reasonable means? Who knows? I feel like everything should have a guaranteed pity. 50 50 if you summon this much you will get this is very important for games to have and must provide players with alternatives that have the same performance that can be directly purchased which means you can roll on this banner maybe get lucky and get something or you can flat out purchase it i think this is fine what they should do for this is, is have players have the ability to be able to grind in-game currency enough to have the chance, a reasonable chance, to get one copy of every character. And then for whales who want to skip the grinding, they can just straight up buy it. This is one of the best changes I've ever seen. This is really good. And this is a massive W for the, for the gacha community. Now, hopefully this doesn't age poorly, but this would be insane. But I will say, if that does go through... Profit margins for gotcha games are going to plummet. I mean that genuinely. Plummet. Surely America will appreciate this policy and have the balls to apply it. Yeah, well, we'll see. Live broadcast cannot contain high value rewards. Not quite sure how to interpret this, but I think this means that companies can't just use a live broadcast for a game to give away iPhones or something. But the language is vague enough to be interpreted more broadly. In-game item giveaways, not sure on this. This could mean that, you know, the developer live streams that have previously given players rewards for watching the stream can no longer do that. This would affect the general outreach of every Genshin Impact or Honkai Star World dev live streams. They do offer lots of rewards. Uh, generally around 480 to 600 stellar jades or primo gems per broadcast this would cut viewership probably by about 75 percent even more so for genshin bag because those players are starved for any in-game resource whatsoever uh i think this is fine uh, i do think it kind of sucks for more dedicated players who do like watching to do get a little bit of a bonus but i think it's fine more authentic viewership is probably for the best online games can engage in monopolistic behavior or use unfair competition practices lol this is china land of my antivirus delete your chat program as a virus because they want your market 
I'll believe it when I actually see it. No idea what the f that means. Anyone else who speaks Chinese, please check my work. This is one of the best changes I've ever seen for gacha games, period. Will they stick to this? I don't know about that. We'll have to see when this shit gets implemented, but maybe this is one of the reasons why they did decide to give away a doctor ratio for free. But this could change gacha games as a whole forever. How much of this will they stick to? I don't know. When will it be implemented? I don't know. But if there's more updates, I'll let you know. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. This could potentially be the best thing to happen for Gacha Games or be the death of it. We'll have to see.